Hey everybody, it's Silver Shroom, and welcome back to the Blender Solar System. Last time, we took a look at planet Mars, and finished up the inner solar system. Now, we're moving on to the outer solar system, starting with planet Jupiter. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the Sun, and the largest planet in the solar system. It was named after the Roman king of the gods, known to the Greeks as Zeus, god of lightning. Unlike the planets we've looked at so far, Jupiter is a gas giant. It is mostly made up of hydrogen and helium, and as such, it has no solid surface. Jupiter is about 140,000 kilometers in diameter, which is just over 11 Earths wide, but it's only about one-tenth as wide as the Sun. It is, however, about two and a half times as massive as all the other planets combined. Jupiter rotates in only about nine hours and 55 minutes, the fastest rotation of any planet in the solar system. However, because it's not a solid body, its rotation is somewhat differential. Like the Sun, it rotates slower at its poles than at its equator. Now, Jupiter has a very small axial tilt of about 3.13 degrees, so it doesn't really have any seasonal variation. But what Jupiter does have is a ring system. Now, Jupiter's ring system is incredibly faint. It's comprised of four main parts. The innermost halo ring, the brightest part, the main ring, and the Amalthea and Thebe gossamer rings. They are super faint. They don't show up in most photos. And... In my attempt to make them as realistic as possible, visibility-wise, you literally can't see them at all. Kind of begs the question of why I bothered to put them in there. I did use volume absorption and volume scatter to achieve the effect, which will likely prove more impressive on the later planets. As of course, all four of the solar system's giant planets have ring systems. And now on to Jupiter's moons. The Jovian system consists of 79 moons. The four largest were also the first to be discovered. They were discovered in 1610 by Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei, and that is why they are called the Galilean Satellites. From inner to outer, they are Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Galileo discovered them all around the same time. Ganymede and Callisto on January 7th, 1610, and Io and Europa on the 8th. They were the first objects in the solar system discovered to be orbiting something other than the Sun, and it helped to discredit the widely accepted geocentric model of the time. These moons got their name 
from German astronomer Simon Marius, who is actually believed to have discovered the moons himself sometime after Galileo. Whether or not this is true, his names are used. The ones he settled on were Io, a priestess of Hera, Europa, the mother of King Minos of Crete and a Phoenician princess, Ganymede, a hero of Troy, and Callisto, a nymph. All four of these mythological figures were lovers of Zeus. Io, Europa, and Callista being female, Ganymede being male. However, these names were largely dropped in favor of simply putting Roman numerals after the planet's name, so just Jupiter 1 through 4. But the names rose in popularity and have been widely used since the mid-20th century. Now, taking a closer look at each of these moons. You can see them alongside Jupiter here. Io is the innermost and second smallest of these moons. It is about 3,600 kilometers in diameter and is covered in volcanoes that are heated by the gravitational interaction between Io, Jupiter, and the other Galilean moons. It also has the lowest water percentage of any measured body in the solar system. The next moon, Europa, is the smallest of the Galilean moons, and the only one smaller than Earth's moon, just by a small amount. Now, Europa's surface is covered by a relatively thin layer of ice, and underneath it there is believed to be a saltwater ocean. It's just about 3,000 kilometers in diameter. Ganymede is the largest of the Galilean moons and the largest moon in the solar system. It is larger than the planet Mercury, but less than half as massive. About 5,200 kilometers in diameter. It is also covered in ice and also believed to have a subsurface ocean. And finally... The outermost moon, Callisto, is the second largest of these moons at about 4,800 kilometers, and is one of the most heavily cratered bodies in the solar system. Now, taking a look at their orbits, Io is around 421,700 kilometers from Jupiter, Europa at around 670,900 kilometers, Ganymede about 1,070,400, and Callisto about 1,882,700. Now, to take a look at them orbiting. All four of these moons have relatively circular orbits and are tidally locked to Jupiter, always showing the same face. Io takes about 1.8 days to orbit Jupiter, Europa around 3.5 days, Ganymede just over 7 days, and Callisto about 16.7 days. Now, three of these moons, Io, Europa, and Ganymede, 
have an orbital resonance. For every orbit Ganymede makes, Europa makes two and Aya makes four. Callisto, however, is too far out to participate in this resonance. As for Jupiter's other moons, they are much smaller and irregularly shaped. His only other regular satellites are these four inner moons, which orbit within Jupiter's rings, and are also believed to help shape them. From inner to outer, there. Metis, Adrastia, which orbit very close, Amalthea, and Thebe. Amalthe and Thebe are what it's, or what it, Jupiter's two Gossamer name, rings are named after. And they, of course, orbit much faster than the Galilean satellites, but I believe they are tidally locked as well. Like the Galilean satellites, the most of Jupiter's moons are named after other lovers of Zeus, however, some are named after his descendants as well. Jupiter's other irregular satellites are placed in four groups. However, three of these moons do not belong to any of these groups. These three ungrouped moons are the Misto, the innermost of Jupiter's irregular moons, Carpo, and Valetudo. The reason they are not grouped is is that Carpo and Valetudo orbit in the same area as moons that have retrograde orbits, orbiting in the opposite direction of Jupiter's rotation, while their orbits are prograde, and Themisto is just further in than most of Jupiter's other moons. And we can take a look at their orbit. Here we go. The rest of Jupiter's prograde satellites are in the Himalaya group. I guess Carpo's just a bit further out from them. I guess that's why it's not grouped with them. So yeah, the Himalaya group are some of the more inner irregular satellites, and they all have prograde orbits. Himalaya is, of course, the name of one of the moons within this group. I believe it is the largest and or first discovered. The next group is the Karma group, which have retrograde orbits. And then there's the Ananke group, which, like the Karma group, have retrograde orbits but their orbits are just generally more inclined. And finally, the outermost of Jupiter's satellites, the Pasiphae group.
So, that is all 79 of Jupiter's moons. 22 Carme, 7 Himalia, 21 Ananke, 18 Pasiphae, 3 Ungrouped, and the 4 Innermost Moons, and the 4 Galilean Satellites. So, with all that out of the way, let's move on to Jupiter's orbit. So, here we are back in the solar system, now with Jupiter. As you can see, Jupiter is much further out than the inner planets and takes much longer to orbit. Let's speed it up a little. Jupiter orbits the Sun at an average distance of around 780 million kilometers which is just over 5.2 astronomical units. So, over five times further out than the Earth. And it orbits the Sun in just under 12 years. Now, what's interesting about Jupiter's orbit is that Jupiter technically doesn't orbit the Sun. The center of gravity between Jupiter and the Sun is outside the Sun, so it technically orbits that point and the sun wobbles quite a bit as the center of gravity of the whole solar system changes though i didn't do that i just decided to leave the sun like that if we take a closer look at jupiter you can see i only bothered to put in the four galilean moons because the other moons are well, tiny. Now, of course, since Jupiter rotates much, much, much faster than it orbits, its orbit has virtually no effect on the length of its day. So, just under 10 hours. Now, going to our camera mode. In order to get a glimpse of Jupiter as seen from Earth. Now, because it's much further out from the Sun than Earth, Jupiter almost always shows a full disk. It can be seen with just the eye. And with a, a few extra tools, its four largest moons can be seen as well. So, that's it for Jupiter. Next time on the Blender Solar System, we're going to move on to the next planet. See you then.